and eat until like uh, eat until this year. I think a ragu patat. Yeah, ragu patat. I gotta right. say, yeah, dude, I'm trying to patat. sell Mount Nu the rights to my my not my ruga pat. <laughs> Ragu Patat song. <laughs> Wait, you made one for no Dude, news? I can't Shout share it with you. No but I'll let you read it. I'll let you read it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so, I want to introduce everybody. Norby Shaber sitting in between the barrels today. We are once again at the great uh, Bayou Terrebonne Distillers. Thank you for those guys uh, allowing us to come film today. Norby, we have uh, been sitting here talk, telling a few stories, but uh, thank you for coming on the show. We're glad to have you. Happy to be here, my friend. And this is our first official show between the bars. It's, it's, right. it's, it's all downhill <laughs> from here. <laughs> it's it's all, all started can't get no worse. Yeah, yeah, like, I like this shit. Now it's gone. <laughs> Let's start off with you, man. We had a pilot episode last week with Noah, but uh, first official. We'll start with you. Well, look, viewership's going to decrease. I took a picture of Noah and put it on my Instagram a little while ago right. yeah, when he made me this mighty fine uh-huh. papa old-fashioned. Oh, papa, Noah, that's how I go? Yeah. Oh, papa old-fashioned. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, my phone keeps blowing up. Uh-huh. It's all chicks. Yeah. I'm like, what? I like Who's that guy. I like it. Uh-huh. bringing you on as a already uh-huh. thing. I'm going to change my profile picture. It's going to be uh-huh. Noah. Let's put it as Noah. Yeah, that'll work. Like Noah. Noah. He's been doing those push-ups on the Facebook, bro. Uh-huh. Everybody's coming. He's serving <laughs> drinks downtown for about yeah. half a year now. Everybody likes him. Everybody likes him, man. Well, that's good. So, uh, if people don't know, buy your boy. Grew up here, uh, long family history. State Senate representative for Louisiana. Uh, very big into the community. Uh, I know you're a very big uh, nickel supporter. Ride Mardi Gras every year. Um, man, everybody knows a good story about the Chabert family uh, from down to Bayou. So uh, I always just kick it off to you. Tell me uh, who are you and what do you do? Who Lord. This <laughs> <laughs> might take a while. Je m'appelle Norbert Norti Chabert from the Petit Let's Caillou. Let's like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anyone else going to introduce that. Here. You, all, you have served on the Louisiana State Senate. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. One of the youngest state senators uh, ever. ever, right? Ever. Eh, I wouldn't say ever, but, you know, I was uh, during yeah. our time you were in the legislature. Uh, when I got elected, I was the second to youngest member. J.P. Morrell... Um, who was a black guy from New Orleans, uh-huh. and his ironically, his father Arthur Morrell had served in the House when my father was in the Senate. So, again, ironically, number <laughs> de, number de, more two, family uh, ties. Yeah. Yeah. He did a podcast between oh. me, the, Ask JP, and he had me on, and all we talked about was just like what it's like to be growing up as yeah. a legislative kid and then wind up serving one day right, right. as a very good podcast. Yeah, it was in your family, you know, right? Well, you dad, know, it's, it's brother, really not, right? you know, people, they think that, yeah. right? Because dad served and anytime anybody in your family offers themselves up for public service, Correct. then they become just that. They become a public right. person. Right. And you, you tie yourself to the community. The community obviously has confidence in you. If not, they vote your ass out. You know, right. so it works. Do you is you is. use American <laughs> democracy. Yeah. That's why I hate term limits, but I digress. Um, people talk about the in the in your blood thing. Yeah, you know. I mean, Dad got elected in 1972. He had served on uh, the school board here, but Dad was a school teacher. Yeah. Okay, initially. Wow. And before that, he was a poor orphan kid from from cut off. Right. You know. And um, cut off. Shout out. out cut off. You know. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. I mean, we've we've been able to do so well politically right. in this district, this Senate outreach. District Twenty, oh, yeah. because it's half of Terrebonne and half of Lafouche, right. Right. and it's the southern part. Well, Daddy was from Cutoff and Mama was from Chauvin. Why there you go. If you, that's a Keystone combination. Bro. I mean, if you can't get a base out of that, <laughs> right? Then yeah, that's a good rule. Right people there. just don't like you. Yeah, you know? right. that's a good rule right Something there. Right. right. <laughs> but you know, I. I Come from a big family and aunt still to this day. Well, there's only been three of us that serve. You know, really? Dad, Marty, myself, and that was 16 years between Marty and I served. Right. So, um, what made you get into it? I know that in one of your speeches you said that um, you never really thought you were gonna never did do, go into it, or even when you ran, you didn't think you were gonna win. Correct. Much less win and then serve two more terms yeah. after that. Much less three years, right? Yeah, I mean, look. 
my whole political elected life has been sort of like a series of unfortunate events, uh, right, that led to it. Mm -hmm. um, I had graduated from Nichols, and I thought that I was going to be a, a history teacher. That was my plan. So you were following Dad's footsteps, Connor, because he was a teacher. He was a teacher. So now here you're going back into the education. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, uh, a buddy of mine, Casey Gidry, again from Cutoff, mm -hmm. was fraternity brother. He's like, hey, I'm going to take, uh, I want to take the LSAT. I said, let's, I want to take the LSAT too, so let's take the LSAT. I'm going to go to law school maybe. Who knows? We'll see. Mm -hmm. And history and government, you know, those degrees yeah, lead you to be, open. they leave you in a position to be successful for the LSAT. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So, um, did that, took that, had the scores to get into law school, and then a buddy of mine, Ben Landry from Thibodeau, uh, got, he had been working for Justice John Weimer, and had, an, uh, uh, John decided he was gonna run for the Supreme Court from the district court, and that's a big race. I mean, that's like running for Congress, right? Because right? there's like six seats on the Supreme Court or what have you. Ben gets uh, to be his aide de camp, you know, his driver and at all, the, <laughs> yeah. all the events and all yeah. that. Right. And uh, they win. Well, long story short, Ben decides that he wants to kind of keep doing that, working on campaigns. And he, he went to work for Senator Landrew on that campaign. And when he was applying, I said, hey, I got nothing to do. I'm bartending downtown <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> yeah, you know, Summertime, I'm not I, teaching nothing. I'm not, I wouldn't be going to law school until the next fall. Yeah, uh, throw my name in the hat. And sure enough, I got, I got hired on, went to work for Senator Landrew at the time, wow. um, working cool. campaigns. And then... That I loved it. Yeah, I loved that part of it. Beginning. That was the first feel of it. You got well, right. no, not so much the first feel, but it, it brought me. I hadn't been in politics at this point. My family had been in politics right, for, right. But you for were a long time, and, and um, it brought me back right. to what had kind of I'd grown up in. Right. But since Daddy had died and Marty had not been in office, right. I was like, oh, this is neat. Let me try this. And it was in New Orleans. I could be Norby. Right. I, did, I wasn't Leonard Not Son. Yet. I, wasn't no, 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 I was doing the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, correct. correct. Well, that led to me then the next year was a governor's race, and Hunt Downer ran for governor. Mm -hmm. From around and here. I, was, I was at the camp on Grand Isle, and he called, and he says, what you doing? I said, uh, you want the truth or a lot? Uh, <laughs> I'm at the camp. I said, I'm, at, I'm at the camp. I'm with my girlfriend. <laughs> few cocktails. We, uh, we drink. He says, uh, when you coming back, let's talk. So we met at his office, not far from here, yep. downtown, and uh, convinced me to, to go to work for him. And I love Hunt, man. Yeah. What a dedicated man. Yeah, what a absolutely. dedicated public servant, both right. from you know just a community standpoint, uh, public service standpoint. And his time in the National Guard, we all joke that Hunt would have rather been Adjutant General of the Louisiana <laughs> National Guard than Governor yeah, of the State of Louisiana. Right. And And uh, tremendous service, tremendous man. I really enjoyed my time, but it was a crowded field. Right, it was an open sure. race. Yeah. A lot of people ran. Remember, right. Governor Blanco was in the race. Governor yeah. Jindal, I mean, eventually Governor Jindal. Um, the president of the Senate was running. Former president of the Senate. A bunch of people. And I, and we never yeah. really, we never got, we never got on top of the weight. Yeah. Right. We came yeah. close. Yeah. We never got on top of the weight. Like you were right there, but just couldn't. Whoop. We couldn't hit it. Couldn't we lost it. But, but I tell you this. It's an amazing story, and it's, it shows you what type of man Hunt Downey is. We coming back from southwest Louisiana. I can't remember if we were in Jennings or, or, or what have you, but it was close enough to drive back to Baton Rouge. Uh -huh. And you know when you come over the bridge from Baton Rouge, like you go into Lafayette, <clears throat> there's that one little bridge not far off. Right? They call that the Lobdale oh, exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Lobdale exit, you can take yeah, yeah. 190 and go to North Louisiana. I know it's so much. It's a very if you travel a lot, it's a very famous yeah. exit. Anyway, we're approaching the Lobdale exit. There is a fire <laughs> in a car, okay? Jeez. On the crest of the bridge. And people are just going by. Like in the lane? In, in the lane next to it. They just go. Stop it? They don't want to stop because, I mean, that bridge is hell to get over. Y'all yeah. know. <laughs> so. Hunt, boom, like General Downer in charge. <laughs> Grabs from under the seat. I've been riding with him for three months. Didn't know he had this. Whoop, light on the front dash like his star skin hut. Jeez, Hits a button. Hey, hey, hey. We got to go. Whoop, we take the shoulder. We pull up. 
to the crap. We pull up right behind the burning vehicle. Uh-huh. Hunt jumps out the truck. I'm like this. Now remind me, there's no iPhones. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this is, is 2003. This is before, you might have a page yeah. or I mean, I had a text, but it, you know, it's counting how many characters I could use. Right, like, you could only use a little bit. Hunt jumps out the car, runs to the back, puts on a state police jacket, <laughs> throws out a flare, puts a cone, <laughs> runs to the truck. There's a baby in the uh, car. Sure. I swear on my father's <laughs> grave, if I am lying, I am dying. Okay. <laughs> Runs to the car, looks, she's like, there's a woman in the car, she's freaking out. Grabs the baby, there's a baby, she gives the baby to Hunt. Hunt is taking a baby out of a burning car. I'm like, where is the press when you need him? If they, if they hear Hunt is governor tomorrow, stop the election. He's rescuing babies from burning, burning cars. cars. In the okay. <laughs> and I'm like trying to stop us from getting hit by an 18 wheeler because, as y'all know, heavily commercial. Right, everybody's rolling. Look, he looks back into the car. He's like, Is there anything that I can help you with, ma'am? She's like, My Louie, my Louie. And she, I don't know what, what's going on. Louis, I don't know what's Louis. going on. I'm on one side of the car. She's on the car. She's my Louie, my Louie. She reaches down, Louis Vuitton back. <laughs> uh-uh. I thought you there said you dog. I didn't know if it was a dog, oh, another yeah. kid. Yeah. It's a Louis Vuitton bag. Got to walk side. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen to me. You know what she does? Got to save the bag, bro. Look. Opens the door, gets out. <laughs> Shut up. The door opens the whole time? Unbelievable, bro. <laughs> And he's, he's like a superhero. I wish I could make this stuff up. the baby out. She was worried about that Louis and that kid. Oh, <laughs> but you know, you get paralyzed with fear. Don't know what to do. We calmed right. them down. She saved the kid, saved the Louis. Opened the door, got out. Unbelievable. Crazy. Oh, yeah. rescue hunt. <laughs> I mean, look. But yeah, so he calls me. I go to work for him. Did campaign consulting for a few years. And then the, when the storms came, you know, that was sort of like the, yeah. the siren song, song to come back home. I was living in New Orleans for Katrina and just worked on a Secretary of State's race. And, um, you know, you had to evacuate. Right. There was, yeah. there was no, there was no, yeah. and, and this is. Do not stay. <laughs> this was crazy. Okay. I was living with my fraternity brother, Matt Gresham. We had just lost a congressional race together. He was communication director. I was political director. We lost, Billy Tozan III was running to succeed his father in Congress. We lost by like 536 votes. Like Over 13 parishes. That breaks down to... Hold Russia. On. Hold on. It still, still bites me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we lost that race. And uh, Matt got a job with the Port of New Orleans. He's still there to this day. Does yeah. external affairs, wow. lobbying, and whatnot. And um, he got an apartment. We moved over there. And if you remember... This era of Saints football, Hazlitt and McCarthy were tanked. I mean, the team was terrible. Yes. Okay. yes. I, think, yeah, I think it was the era of the, the, the maybe the three Billy Joes and the Jeff yeah, Blake. Right. It was, it was right like, before the Aaron Brooks awful. time. It was real bad. No, it was post Aaron Brooks. Aaron okay. Golden got okay. rid of him. <laughs> so it was Billy Joe Holbert, Billy Joe Tolliver. We right. had so, a couple I, of I remember different Jeff Billy Blake Jones. was there for a little minute. I don't remember, right. but it was, we were bad. Right. He is one of the most ardent, diehard Saints fans that I know. Okay. And I called him. I said, hey. And we had had season tickets and such. And we were always on the, behind the Saints bench. It was a bunch of us from college. A bunch yeah, of turning right. all that. And uh, I said, hey. It's, it's renewal time. Uh, he goes, I'm off the carpet. I'm out. I said, dude, we can't be living in New Orleans. In the football season. And not get Saints. He said, they're going right. to be terrible. I said, well, let's do this. We always sit behind the Saints. I said, let's go to the other side of the field. Yeah. So we go to the other side of the field. I said, I'm going to get two. Nobody else is getting tickets. Tickets were probably cheap. Right. Look, you want to uh, – you can pick wherever you want to yeah, sit. pre-Reggie Bush. Said, sit with me for the first preseason game. We play the Ravens. If you like the seats, we'll keep them. I mean, right. I, I, I'm keeping them. You can buy one. It yeah. will just – it would be me and you. Split it up. We go. Meet everybody. The, our friends that were still going to the games and all that stuff. We VA all afternoon. And uh, the – First quarter, Jamal Lewis had like 155 yards and like two touchdowns. It was stupid. <laughs> 21 points like in the first quarter. But that is not what matters here. Right. Because none of us were talking about the storm that was brewing in the Gulf uh-huh. that would be hitting, uh-huh. you know. Right. Like, Coming up. Soon. The next day, <laughs> maybe. Sunday night. Right, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, not the soon. next day. 
But like Sunday, Monday. Yeah, it was okay. Coming. We didn't even know. A lot of people really, really. Slept it was on like a like, normal day yeah, like, on right. that Friday night. Actually, remember preseason I games Friday night? Right. On Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> In the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> well, we went out F and M's. It was late. We were young. Yada yada. He comes banging on my door at like 10 in the morning. I'm like, hey. dude, Contra Flow starts at 4. <laughs> I'm four like, o'clock. Contra, what? Why are we going to Contra Flow? Right? What the heck is I going on? I get up. On? Listen to me. No, you appreciate this. I made us, I had two pilsners. I had one at a white elephant game the, the Christmas before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I made us big talls, Bloody Marys in them. Uh-huh. I gave him one. He Road drink. Look, no, not Rhodes. I mean, big, the big pills in the glass. Yeah. And I sat there, and his mother, Ann Gresham, English, English teacher at Nichols for a long time, widow, he's like, I got to get back to Thibodeau. I got to help my mama board up a house. And I'm like, <laughs> <"Whoa."> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to sit here and watch the news for a little, yeah, little bit long before I get behind the wheel, coach. Yeah. He leaves, puts his drink down, keys three-quarter full. And I just sit in the same spot till about three o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, put my drink down. Decide it's time for me. I mean, I talked to him. Yeah. At this we point, back. My brother's got a plan. Marty's got a hunting lodge in Woodville, and that's where everybody from here was Maybe going. I mean, sure. Miss Pat from Chauvin was there. I mean, everybody. Yeah. I mean, as many people as we could fit in that some bitch we did. And um, but you, that was some good cooking. Though. I didn't come back. <laughs> okay, from 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 that night until like a month and a half later. Yeah. All right. So and you can actually like get back in there. The, and look, our apartment complex is the Soleil, okay? That's across the street from Mardi Gras World. Yeah. When you're coming on the bridge from the West Bank, if you right. look to the left, it's got the big parking garages and all that. Yeah, seen it all right. the time. They went in. They only they took out our refrigerator. That was it. Everything was. Jeez. And you had been. We'd been watching flooding and looting. And the convention center is from from here to the courthouse. Stones through. Okay. Yeah. And you going? They sleep. You watching it like they broke into my house. They stole right. my stuff. You know, because yeah. I left with a bag, my laptop. Right. You didn't take everything me. you had. Just yeah. Very essential. Yeah. Think so you getting out for a couple of days? I walked in that apartment, <laughs> coach. And when I saw those two Bloody Mary Pilsners still standing there, Shut up. I swear. Really? Now they had the residue on. <laughs> yeah, them. yeah. They looked a little different. But than you that left was them. so crazy. Was walking in exactly the way it looked a month ago. when we left, a month and a half when we left. Except the refrigerator was gone. That's it. The bed was exact. I mean, it was. Oh no, they never Scary. Now it was stank and hot. Yeah, and I bet awful, it had a but, little, a little stench. You know, we were blessed in that regard. You know, That's but good. to to wrap it up on the original question, I talked for thirty minutes on. It's good. It's all good, baby. After that, we came home for Rita. Huh? Rita put. Um, a Full foot of, of water in the house mm-hmm. in Chauvin. A lot of damage. And, you know, I worked on one political campaign after that, James, uh, for insurance commissioner. You know, in 2006, the insurance commissioner for Louisiana decided he was not going to run. Robert right. Woolley, uh, he resigned midterm. We was an attorney, went to work for Adams and Reese, and uh, there, was a, there was a special election. And two people ran, current insurance commissioner Jim Donnelly, um, and then James David Kane, who was chairman of the uh, Senate Insurance Committee, who was the you know, I went to work for him, and about three months into the gig, I realized he was a dirty, rotten son of a bitch. And that's the only job I've ever quit in my life. Really? Really? Yeah, and I, I thank God every day I did that because he's a dirty, rotten son of a bitch. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> you dirty, rotten. But that, that moment said, I've got to get out of politics. I need to go back home. Yeah. And uh, I came home, uh, started a little uh, sports marketing business, did that for a little while. There was a position at Nichols that opened up. Uh, in marketing and development, and I'm like, well, with my sports marketing experience, I'm gonna apply, see what happens. I got the job, worked at Nichols for two couple of years, and then Gustav and Ike, you know, it's like big bro. dog, bam, which is, you know, bam. this is all right after, you know, you talking about two oh five, oh six, oh seven, oh eight, Gustav and Ike, and then it hit again, two two. So we flood same way for Ike, yeah. right? Even yeah. though Gustav did a direct hit on Terrebonne Parish. You know, it was kind of right. freight train just came through, right. came wind damage, not a whole lot of storm surge. They were um, a week from, apart from each other, huh? or a few couple days. Of, couple, no, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. And then I hit all the way over yonder in Texas, and and we flood out. Right. It brings Same all thing. That, all the moisture. Well, here here begins sort of the the real series of unfortunate events. You know, 
The storms happened uh, originally. Governor Blanco, Scott Angel, some other people decide that Louisiana has no comprehensive plan for coastal restoration or hurricane protection or anything like that. So they come up with the con it's all in different it's all in different departments, and they came up with an idea to form the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, CPRA. That's yeah. what everybody knows it now, or CIPRA. I never right. called it that a day in my life, except just now. <laughs> so what they did was they took the jurisdictional aspects of, of these different departments, merged them into one, and said, for the first time in Louisiana history, we're going to have a comprehensive master plan on coastal restoration and hurricane protection, CPRA, protection and restoration. Sometimes right. i got to remind them <laughs> protection is yeah. Just as important, if not more so, than right, restoration. That's right. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So anyway, Governor Blanco does that on the tail end of her deal. She doesn't run. Governor Jindal gets elected. Right. Gov Governor Jindal appoints Garrett Graves to be more or less the, the, the true first head of CPRA. Okay. Garrett Graves decides that Jerome Zarang, who's director of the Terrebonne Levy District, should be his number two man at CPRA. He pulls Jerome to Baton Rouge. Terrebonne Levy has no director. Wendell Curall, who runs the Saint Lafouche Levy District, which is the best right. levy district in the state, yes. you know, because you know, <laughs> the uh, they had gotten started before we did. Right. Okay. Hurricane and the old Juan joke, Reggie, if, Reg, if y'all if y'all had Reggie Dupre between both barrels, <laughs> he would tell you the story of the reason why Saint Lafouche Levy started in 1965. Uh, was because Dick Guidry's house flooded. And then really? the Terrebonne Levy started in 1985 because Leonard Chavez's house flooded <laughs> from Juan. But anyway, um, they call Wendell and they're like, hey, I need you to be interim director. Reggie thinks he wants to, to do this, but um, he's got to serve out his, his, his term. And Reggie at this point, state senator. At this, yeah, at this point, at there, this was, point, there was no term. Correct. There was no storms. But when Gustav and I hit, and Salafouche had, you know, right. they, had the they, had, they had to go through it as right. much as we did. They were like, Wendell, come home. Terrebonne, hire your director. Reggie um, decided that he was going to resign from the Senate and left an open seat. And then myself and Damon Baldone, who was representative at the yeah. time, Britt Kale from Salafouche, who was a, a councilman, uh, all ran. But... I got recruited, okay? You know, well, I had, I'd never served in office. Uh -huh. And the people down the bayou, I mean, let's be frank, they were pissed. They right. flooded two times yeah, they were in tired. four they years. They want to know what's going to happen. You know, you who's know, going to help us? We need, some, care we need someone to help us because whoever's here is not helping us. And so. look, I'm not saying that Reggie and him did a, did no, a bad absolutely job. Absolutely not. You know, that we started the Morgans of the Golf Project back in 1990, I think two when Marty was in the Senate after Dad had died and Billy Toze had gotten us some money and the first flood gate was built on Bailo Kaya in 1989 after we had flooded for Juan and Dad created the South Lafouche Levy District. Right. I mean, excuse me, the South Terrebonne um, Floodwater District or whatever it was called at the time. Now it's a Terrebonne Levy and Conservation right. District. Right. And we got a but, lot of good stuff put in place nowadays. <laughs> well, we, we've come it took a long time to get there. We've come yeah. a long way. We tried to right pass way. taxes, yeah. right. you know. Because we tried to pass taxes, failed, and then we, you know, after the floods, they the passed people, them. The people eventually passed the tax and built their own levy system, basically. Because they knew that, you know, we, yeah. we've been trying to do stuff, and Going the federal government wasn't guests, helping talked us. talked about yeah. that. That's right. Our first You know, the federal government wasn't helping us. And we took it upon ourselves to help ourselves. Right. So, uh, Noah talked about the same thing last the week. The resilience of Cajun, old Cajun, Cajun, Cajun grit. <laughs> one, hey, one thing I've known about Noah, he makes a good old-fashioned, runs a good business, knows a lot about history. That's it, bro. <laughs> but we tell you we, we mentioned sure the does. same thing. It took us, to, you know, the Cajun grit to come back and say, you know what? We'll take care of it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, and, you know, so when we ran, it was, it was a draft effort. I had to be convinced to run. Right. You know, I had a good job at Nichols. Um, yeah, I could have worked that for the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, you just had settled into that, basically. Like, yeah. hey, I got this new thing. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm liking it. And then they're like, no, Norby, you're not going to do this. Well, you know, You're going to be our guy. We push up, and you're going to be the state senator. You know, and it wasn't, it wasn't the powers that be because they were all against me. <laughs> it was the people. Right. You know? Okay. I went to South. I went to, I went to Upper Lokaya, Cash, and South Terrible. 
right? I was standing on the side of the road in my flooded house that I, my daddy built, and it died, and my brother Lenny was living in with his family, right. okay? When the cars were coming up to buy him, that they were flooded out, right? Right. And hey, you went through it. You knew. We, you, everybody, you, now we'd done it so many times. Right. You were one of them. No, always will be. Right. And so I got recruited, and that was the best thing. You know, right. I mean, that was the best thing. So I felt confident to run, and we won. And the rest, as they say, is history. It's history. It's history. Two terms That's after that, story. and then got reelected twice by the grace of God and the people of the area. I never heard you uh, tell that story. That's pretty cool. And so, uh, any political aspirations later on in life? Are you done? You think you might be done? I mean, you know, you never want to say never. Right. Uh, right. Being, I'm not married, I don't have any kids. Right. Being state senator from this area is going to be the honor of my life, regardless of whatever I do from here Correct. on out. Uh, Big deal in your life. Huge, huge deal. Huge honor to represent your people and be successful. I mean, yeah, right. I think you I was, did a lot of good things in I, there. You I know? think I did. Um, there are only really two jobs that, in my heart, I would. There, you know, there's want and need. Right. I always say if, if President Shepard? No. <laughs> if the people wa- well, let me rephrase. If the people want me. <laughs> if your people come to I'll think President about it. Right, right, right. Think about hey, it. Here, Recruit here. President Shepard. <laughs> uh, but you know, Lieutenant Governor, yeah. in my opinion, That'd be cool. is the greatest job in the world. Right. Because you get paid. And this is the full time, there's no term limit. Uh-huh. You just gotta do a good job. You stay there as long as you want. Really? Yeah. Your job is to market and promote the state of Louisiana. Boy, you perfect at that. From hey, it promotes itself. From Homer to Homer. <laughs> Stem the stern, coach. Dude, from the, top what of the, what way. He's from the window up to the wall. We're gonna stop right there. But you get my point. I, right. this place you know? yeah. I mean, it, it sells itself, dude. Yeah. That's so you know, wild. It's, a, it's an amazing job. And it's you probably get to go in the suites for the Saints games and LSU <laughs> yeah. na- Look, national championships. You, 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 you have your own suite. Right. <laughs> you have your own suite. For the record. Well, hey, that's better nice, place man. to promote, too, huh? <laughs> but that's the point. That, I mean, you don't have the taxpayers pay you, give, provide a suite to the lieutenant governor to bring people in from all over the world. Right, to say to this see, is a good this time. Is this Let me promote the state. That's it. So it's amazing. The other one is – I always say that the closest thing to royalty that we have in, in this amazing republic uh, of the United States of America is the U.S. Senate. Yeah. And that's the one thing standing between us and chaos. Yeah, okay? true. People ask me all the time, are you worried about this? Are you worried about that? You know, and I don't want to get too deep into actual right. political ideology uh, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But our founding fathers and our framers were so smart. You know, the House of Representatives is... Uh, a representation of the people. Right. Okay, small districts. There's 400, and you know everybody got their own little say. Yeah, basically. There's, 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 there's almost 440 of them. It's they change their districts change based on uh, population of the states. So you can have six senators. You could have six representatives at the beginning of one decade, and if your state grows, you can have seven. Yeah. So on and so forth. Constantly changing. And they start the appropriations process, and they, you know, start all these bills and whatnot, and they're like, rah, angry, angry, you know, <laughs> activists. Right. And, and they, you, you got to get a bill out of that, uh, a, a body of that many people it takes a lot of compromise, and, you know, then it moves on to the Senate. And the Senate is two members from every state. There's only a hundred of them. So, right. You know, you're not, you don't have so much of a police jury mentality where you're worried about your district. Right. And, and it's more about the entirety of the state and the nation, the, the powers in the Senate. You know, uh, a president who we give, we think has more power than yeah. they do, right. by the way. But he has to, the to go through all these. Uh, if he wants to appoint somebody to Supreme Court or any court for that matter, you've got to go through the Senate. Senate right. You know, the Senate has to approve all treaties. Yeah. You know, uh, they get final say on pretty much it's a big deal. all bills <laughs> that come from the House, and then they negotiate them. And, you know, it's uh, you can't pass a budget bill or any bill without the Senate. It, right. It's a very, 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 very So United powerful. States Senator Mr. Norby Shaw Bear doesn't have the worst ring in the world. Today. No. 
if know? that if that's what would happen. But I tell you what, man, the thing I fear most about our country and its future uh, is how hard it is to be in public service yeah. these days. Okay. Yeah. Look, when I got elected, that's true. My Facebook page was virtually non-existent right. and Instagram and all that. Oh, as soon as you I mean, did, look yeah. at the beginning of the term that I was get a, that I got elected in the iPhone didn't exist. Right. Think about that. Nowadays, I mean, it's now everybody has everything access going in. Oh, it, like this. I mean, Instant. let me tell you, we got more uh, epidemiologists in Terrebonne Parish, <laughs> <laughs> more constitutional lawyers yeah, than anywhere else in the country. I absolutely, find. Uh-huh. it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, you definitely in a much bigger spotlight nowadays. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything comes up. And listen, if you saw it on YouTube. It's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's on YouTube. If it's on YouTube, it's true. I mean, look, you two guys can get on YouTube. <laughs> We're on YouTube. <laughs> Everything's on YouTube. Anybody can get on YouTube. We can get on YouTube. You can start your own YouTube channel. Right? But, um, but seriously, I mean, you know, it, it's a very powerful tool, social media. Yeah. And, you know, it's like the old Spider-Man line. With great power comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. Right. Yeah. And people that are using this power are not even thinking about the repercussions that it has right. on people that, let's face it, like even one would say, Puff Dan, he don't know no better here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> on the other side of the, of the country in the yeah. south, they'd say, bless his heart. Right. <laughs> don't poor even know thing. no better. Poor right. thing. Poor you know? thing. So people just see this. And they just forward stuff, right. you know. And whether it's, if it looks real, kind then it real. must yeah, be yeah. real. It's yeah. got to be real. Whatever's kind of true. Right. Yeah. If it's close to being real, it's real on Facebook. All right. So another thing I wanted to ask you is kind of a little off the politics Let's roll. portion. Uh, Nichols football. Big supporter of Nichols football, right? Yeah. We uh, won a couple of championships past right. couple of years. What do you think this year – if there's Nichols football, is there going to be Nichols football? There's not going to be Nichols football, unfortunately. No Nichols football. No. Yeah. They've yeah. already decided, correctly? Correct. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate because we had a hell of a team coming back. Right, and, right on. Uh, Lindsey Scott, uh, who was a, a River Parish kid that, that transferred. Uh, from He was signed by LSU, transferred to, from LSU to a couple of schools. And... Um, Ended up, at Nichols. ended up at Nichols. It hell of a talent. Yeah, yeah, very, very talented. He was so uh, and, a, and a good kid. He was a high recruit out the of fr- yeah. the football program has come. A well, he had some injuries. Very long way. Way. Oh yeah, very, very long way in the past few years. So you're big into that. Also, I know you're big into Mardi Gras. Road Wait, my foot. excuse me, no. Hold on. What's that, Noah? Oh, do I oh, want yeah. another? Do I, I want another one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll take yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, back. <laughs> it's amazing. We got, refill, we got look. that. <laughs> look, it's, it's, the clarity. It's like it just appeared. It's huh? almost like it yeah. was empty. And it's, it's a, f- it's a fine terrible to still revintage. Yeah. <laughs> so is that an old papa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always ask. We're going to start asking that guest. Yeah. The old papa. Yeah, he said what he was drinking football. earlier. I'm a fan of the old fashioned. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I make a fairly decent one. This is amazing. They call it the Opal Paul. Yeah, I'm good. not quite there yet, but no. the hair is getting longer and grayer. Hey, so as long as it can keep getting longer, yeah, it's what I was told. So you start, hair, don't start care. losing it. Do you know the laparus in me? It, it just keeps fading yeah. back. <laughs> you know. All right. So we talked about football. Talked about politics. Mardi Gras, big thing around here. I know you big into it. You love actually, Mardi Gras. You actually rode on my float a few years. Yeah, love uh, it. We, have, we always had a good time. But one of my favorite things, one of my favorite stories, well, I got two. <laughs> I got two, two, Utah. Uh, I got two uh, favorite stories. Uh, one is watching you ride down the parade route with real glass beads. I mean... <laughs> Everyone that tell rides me with me, the, me everyone that rides with me loves the Norfolk Shaw Real Glass Beads. Tell me about the real Where glass beads. Where did it start? The morning. What's the story behind it, Mr. Norby? So growing up in Lokaya, you know, it, it, back in this day, before you had a box and all that stuff, my mother loved um, PBS. She loved PBS. So on PBS, to end Mardi Gras every year, right, what they would show the, re- the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. Okay. And growing up as a kid, my dad rode in Homus, 
and um, he rode in all of them back in the day, uh, one or the other at some point. And then he quit riding about six years before he died. But they would be at the balls, they would be babysitter, and, and the babysitter would watch the thing, and I'd yeah. watch and whatnot. And I loved it, and I loved the old, you yeah, know, the actual. Famous. I mean, you, you were pre- yeah. Manuel what was, I mean, forever was, was all about the court, yeah. the presentation, yeah. the tablet, the history, the, history, the right. regalia. Everything behind the ride, not just the ride right days. Yeah. yeah, so you appreciate it. You and participated in all aspects of motorhome. Exactly, and, you know, New Orleans was all about the real glass beads, and they had disappeared. Uh-huh. And, you know, being a history lover like I am, right. when they came back, I decided that I I wanted to throw real glass beads. But here's the thing. You know, you're riding Hercules, you're riding Terranians, you're riding Homeless, okay, you're throwing overhand. (laughs) They don't feel like that. (laughs) And you want, I mean, you're chunking. People hate it. We think they love it. They don't. (laughs) Um, So uh, over the years, you know, I've been riding since I was 18. I only missed like two years. Um, I kind of lowered the the. The, the overhand throw, mm-hmm. although I still buy me ass more of a pitch if you need it. <laughs> um, we started if throwing the footballs, the stuffed animals, all that stuff. Right. right. And it's way easier to throw. I, I learned because I always rode. I rode Hercules, fifteen years, Jeez. and dark and day are two different rocks. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we um, when I started riding during the day, Terranians at first, and then rode homeless, and then in got out and got back and, and whatnot. I really, really liked that interaction. Yeah. And I rode on top for a couple of years, but I'm a down, I like to interact with the crowd. I like to see the people. Give the stuff to the kids right. and all that Time stuff. Where's the people from? All the people. <laughs> yeah. First one in front. So the real glass beads, when I first started throwing them, if you throw them, you don't throw them, right? They just break on the ground. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's an old bead from Nobody Japan. Nobody knows what it is. Yeah, 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 like, no, grab that one. So it's tradition. I got into this habit of just going, this is a real glass <laughs> bead. And you bring one them close, by one. one by one, and you one, one by one. one. Or when you see your people, you know, you, you, you holler at somebody, right, bring it right, to the floor, right. and you give them a, a, a 12-pack, and you're like, real glass bead. <laughs> and they look at them, and when they feel them in their hands, and they see them, they go, yeah. You know, they think you're giving them George. I mean, it's because it's, yeah. that's what it is. I mean, it's glass. Yeah. It's, that it's something that glass. means something as opposed to the yeah. plastic little beads. And... Yeah, and they keep them. Right. The, these every keep. year, I got into, since since uh, social media has gotten as big as it has, I've gotten into, I, uh, I get my, my glass beads at the same place every year. They have a very, uh, give them a shout out, uh, uh, Mardi Gras Imports, out there on Toulouse, off a of canal. It's amazing. So you get the glass beads. Grocery. So we get a discount, by the way. <laughs> right. Homeless, Hercules, Terranius. You mentioned between all... the barrels and North, <laughs> you get 5% off. <laughs> I wish. We need to work that. But anyway, they have the largest variety of real glass beads, and every year I pick different ones. Some of some staples, but I lay them out on my table, and I, and I play um, a little Mardi Gras music. Right? Normally it's new suit. Okay. Wow. That's a good one. And I slow pan uh-huh. across all the glass beads, Hashtag and everybody right knows what I'm about to throw. Right. Come up on, come they up know on, what's coming come up. up on Fat Tuesday, right? All right. And all the replies I get, and it's like, I still have the glass beads you threw me a couple of That's years hashtag ago. Hashtag real glass beads. You know, 2012 real glass beads. Glass beads. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I love it. You know. Side so note: I still have my glass beads. <laughs> actually, actually, rode next to Norby yep. for two or three years. Yeah. On Manny's. On the float. Yeah, exactly. Glass. And I always give everybody I ride with. Yeah, uh, right. Right. Here's it's glass like, bead. Right. He hands out the glass beads to the riders that I still have on. Yeah. There, there you go. Hey, the salute, hey, salute to the salute real, real glass bead. <laughs> the real Mardi Gras. Salute. Off on that little tangent about your glass beads, I was telling Manny earlier, I thought you made those beads yourself. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to hold up. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I want to be modest. Tell it to real truth. Are you there with a needle stroking the glass? My, beads. my ain't weeder down the bias. She <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm totally joking. You can make a mean crab patty and glass beads. beads. I mean, yeah. it's freaking awesome. You know, and it's, it's always, it's like, I would look forward to it. Get on yeah. the phone, like, all right, Norman, where's those glass beads at? You got them? Listen. Um, right. And you, yeah, your costume was George Washington that year. Uh, pretty legit. I'm just going to have to tell American you, man. Team. I mean, it wasn't as tight as the Green Lantern the year before, <laughs> but it was, it was, on, it was, yeah, it was, it was nice, cool. man. You know, but I, I do remember too. My my second favorite memory is we with the first year you came back onto the float 
we, we went up with the idea of everybody dressed in a different costume. All right, we're going to do whatever. Uh, one year we were American, we were superheroes, and we had him as a Green Lantern. But the first year we did it, you said you were going as a Nichols, uh, you were going as a Nichols student. And every time I turned around, you were in a different costume <laughs> with Nichols theme. You were a baseball, yeah, a baseball player, jersey, and a football jersey. <laughs> jersey. Basketball. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It was like 12 costume 12 changes different at Norwich and Nichols. Well, what, I, what, what was my kind of thing when, I was, when I'd ride uh, normally is I would ride with a Nichols, red Nichols baseball hat. Mm-hmm. And uh, whatever the tunic was for mm-hmm. that year yeah. on the float, when I was riding Hercules, we, as black sheep, we were in the first float. We were the title float every year. We rode with the same tunic every year. Right. Had the black sheep emblem of the National Guard mm-hmm. unit here. Right. right. And that was, that was our deal. So I... Always wear the nickel, the red nickels flat bill. Right, that's my thing. Baseball hat. So when we were gonna start changing costumes and whatnot, I was like, all right, how can I make this happen? How can we change? Still representing so, yeah. nickels. Absolutely, always, bro. Always. Yeah, Twelve always. different costumes. That was pretty good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, good times. I love that. Was a good time. So I got no, I have no, I have no wife. I have no kids. The Lord has not blessed me yet in that regard. I can't wait till it happens. Let's get with it, Coach. TikTok. <laughs> um, so I live for like. Three things in life. I lo- I, I, I have football tickets to the Saints. I have football tickets to Nichols. I have football tickets to LSU. They were great seats. Um, I, I absolutely love riding Mardi Gras. I can't imagine my yeah. life not, <laughs> not riding Mardi Gras. Yep. Um, and if you've never done a Friday at Galatoire's, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I have done a Friday at Galatoire's. That's a pretty good time. My dad I was a fan, of, a fan of I that. I highly place. recommend it. It's Listen, th- you know, eating is something we do in this state, right. and we take it to another level. They take it on a Friday at Galatoire's. The levels are different. To another level. I mean, you have to. They, they take no reservation. you got to wait in line. Wow. And the line starts at 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning? Shit. Correct. So there is a there is a system, okay, where you can pay somebody to go sit in line, right. and they are Mr. Chabert, and they get to the front of the line. I got and you. And they're Mr. like, gets a Mr. Chabert, lines. party of five, and they say, okay, Mr. Chabert, we will get to you. And, like, and that dude and takes off, go, off and he sends you a message he's like, loose. Mr. Chabert, you have a reservation at Galatoire. I mean, they got your name on the books for five, and then you That's show you up split. around about an hour. Before the doors open, which, I mean, the dining opens, which is there's a bar upstairs right. on the second floor, and everybody vays, and then um, they let you in. Got to wear a jacket. It's, yeah. it's very old oh, New Orleans right. cool. It's definitely, it's, cool. A, cool. It's definitely it's a cool experience. Cool. And all the waiters have been there for forever. There's one uh, fellow, he's from Ville Platte. God bless him. John, and he talks flat. <laughs> and you know, the big thing about uh, flat, flat confusion as it relates to our cuisine in this state is Cajun and, and Creole. Creole. Yep. And Creole and Cajun. No, it's two All different right? things. Nope. And New They're Orleans different. is Creole. Right. Okay. And here it's Cajun. But we're Cajun. And, and then we're, there's, a, there's an offshoot. There's right. Bayou Cajun and Prairie Cajun. Okay. We Bayou. Right. They prairie. Right. They smoke a lot of meats. Right. You know, we don't smoke as many meats and all. Okay, and we, you know, they make a jambalaya. It's tasso. It's it's right. it's pork sausage. You know, uh, yeah. some chicken, yeah. all this stuff. Us, we make a jambalaya. It's you know, it's like a little, little, little. It might be a little pork sausage, a little green onion sausage, all that yeah. stuff. Uh, we might have made it, may not have smoked it. Right. right? Um, might have bought the smoked sausage. And it's, and, it. and, it, and it's <laughs> shrimp. You know, yeah. all that. I call. Right. Gumbos are the same, gum, you know, them it's different. No tomatoes in the gumbo. No. Speak for yourself, coach. <laughs> Don't put no tomatoes in my gumbo. Easy. One of my friends Wait. Me that. Which oh, gumbo oh, are we talking oh, about? Oh, Cajun gumbo. Wait, the, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't, that's such, you paint with such a broad stroke. Uh, I personally like to smother my okra oh, with see, some tomatoes. See, uh, so when I make a shrimp, shrimp okra gumbo, gumbo, I made one last gumbo. night. Yeah, you do a, a okra. That's a little different. So okay. look, my take is an, a Creole gumbo has tomatoes in it, and a Cajun gumbo has no tomatoes. Yeah, if I'm, I'm so doing, if I'm you don't love more Lafouche in you, you may have Don't Creole. even act like y'all don't make red jambalaya. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't even act. <laughs> I tell you what. If you ain't never had a red shrimp jambalaya, <laughs> you are and not lived life, Cousin or, Eddie. Or one thing I learned to cut off. 
your uh, potato salad with your spaghetti. Spaghetti yeah, and bro, potato Yeah, bro, that's a dollar bite thing. It's if a you ain't car- day plate lunch. If you ain't carb loading, you ain't living. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's down the body against Terrebonne. Pedro. Big time, big time Pedro player. I know you like to play Pedro. Listen, I can throw the cards in for Dextrous. I'm half, t- I'm half <laughs> Terrebonne, I'm half Lafouche. So, I can cut, throw it off all of suit. It don't matter. So, uh, Let's just play. <laughs> what I don't like is that five man shit, because that's just crazy. No, 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 no. I don't no, like that either. No, no, my no, question no. was going to be no. is it cut through or is it follow oh, suit? Man. Because, uh, you know, when I moved to Terrebonne, there was a big thing that they said, well, what do you mean follow suit? And I'm like, well, I'm from Lafouche, and it's follow suit down there. And so I adapted. I could play like you said, whatever. I mean, yeah, throw the cards to me, but so you also a little bit of both. Oh yeah, cut you through, probably. follow suit. I'm follow suit. Yeah, understand, man. I look uh, down the buyer. I I'm grew up in Lokaya. I, I okay. learned how to play like at a, at a truck stop. And, and we played <laughs> at a truck stop. Two o'clock in the morning. What drunk, drunk what the truck shit. stops? Teaching was it, you to was play it Marty J's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was I bartending? Uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> Corn nuggets and instru- <laughs> Was your instructor the corn nuggets? Corn nuggets and Because I'm just telling you. I was like 18. That dude can corn nuggets. When I was 18 and we opened up the truck stop, uh, we used to have Pedro Turners on Saturday nights, and I was Dude. definitely bartending. <laughs> Another thing was this. Um, Boy, list. you ain't never seen anger till a woman that traveled from Dularge to play in a Pedro tournament gets caught up <laughs> in a rule. Did. Gets caught up in a rule deal. Gets and ain't happen. drinking. Gets caught up in a rule deal. <laughs> Fine, maybe they'll watch it. She'll cut you. It gets serious in the morning, jeez, boy. What? The way it used to, anyway. All right, so favorite Cajun dish all time. Ha. Huh. We talked about gumbo. And so listen, so this is like a this is a first date icebreaker. Yeah. Uh, I often ask this to, to to women that I'm talking to. I like this about what is the single greatest like you love like what do you well, tell me your dish because i cook a lot y'all know that right, yeah and You're a good uh, cook what do you what do you, you know if i if i'm friendly with 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 someone for long enough and i'm like babe you want to come to the house i make something yeah. um that makes sense <laughs> can make some sandwiches you know <laughs> i gotta ask the question and it's different okay like uh-huh. it's different the way i always pose it is 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 this way there's three choices one, if you're, if you're on a magical island and you had to eat the same thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh-huh. Ball right? shrimp. And that has nothing to do with your question. <laughs> uh-huh. Mine is chips and salsa, ironically. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, from, I had down some chips and salsa. I would say from La Casa, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I would say chicken wings, probably. Oh, yeah. I like some chicken wings, too. But, and then there's like, what is your favorite food? And then there's, what would you eat if it was your last meal on death row? Right. Yeah, that's bad. So, three different ways to look at it. Correct. Too. I like I like the thinking behind. I'm it. very situational. I'm like baseball coach. <laughs> yeah. They ask me what's your favorite drink. I say where am I? Where am I? And what am I doing? Yeah. Am I on second I don't base drink. with nobody else on base? I love this. I love this old fashioned Noah, but I don't want to drink it at the beach. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's totally different. Correct. Right. You want so, the Manny Fresh? Different the beach. situations. Oh, dude, I started drinking ranch water at the beach. Ooh. You ever had that? Tequila and Tapo Chico. <laughs> What is Taco Chico? Taco Chico. <laughs> no, that's like a I little said, it's taco like, Chico. It's, it's, me, it's Mexican mineral water. Yeah, you get it's like it, a little, a pop, oh, like a little pop they drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it, but it's, it's like club soda, but it's different. Uh-huh. My boys drink that at work a lot. All yeah. my cement guys. Cemento, amigos. Hey, See, hey, mix hey, that hey. with some lime and some, and some tequila. They call it ranch water. Google it. I like anyway. It. I've heard of the ranch uh, water already. So, the, 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 the if three, I was dying, uh-huh. Okay, if I was dying, the last thing I'd want to taste, meal. my mama's pork stew. Mm. I love pork. That's I mean, I love, I love it every way. Yeah, me too. Her, pork stew to me, when you, I mean, it's just good. Yeah, it's okay. delicious, man. I like it with turnips. I like it without turnips. I'm about I like it with potatoes. A, I like it with a shit cabbage. ton of green onions. I like no, 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 no. <laughs> None of that. That's a beef stew. <laughs> the only thing you really need to put in pork stew is the green onions, turnips. Those are the only variety. But other than that, dark that root. The dark, dark root. C'est bon. I like What's it. my favorite? All right. Favorite. Oh, my goodness. I made a shrimp spaghetti the other night, and I swear to Christ, I could have eaten the barrel full. <laughs> I like a shrimp spaghetti. Like this, bro. It's ah, good. Bring it all in. Yeah, I love shrimp spaghetti. What? It's so good. I mean, Very I good. love it. I uh, absolutely love it. But, I mean, there's so many good dishes. So, uh, tell me this. You probably don't know it as much as you eat pork. Ruti. Ruti. Ha ha! Bruh. 
Roti, you put That's that over some water rice. That's if you ever heard anything. Put that over some rice. <laughs> See, and I grew up. I grew up with two loves of food: with Cuban side oh, yeah. and, and the, the Cajun, and the Cajun side. side. So I got both. In a big rooms. contrast, the flavor. Hey, Absolutely. you know, hey, you know what he hadn't eaten until like uh, eaten until this year, I think. A ragu patat. Yeah. Ragu patat? Yeah. Right. I gotta yeah, say, dude, I'm trying to patat. sell Nong Nu the rights to my, 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 my ruga pat, <laughs> ragu patat song. Wait, you made one for Nong Nu? Dude, I can't Shout share it with you. But I'll let you read it. I'll let you read it. Hey, I talked to uh, Dirt Boy, uh, Duga. I'm like, dude, we gotta collaborate, coach. We'll, uh, we'll I got a song. We'll text and it's like in that old, that old school uh, German, uh, like, we'll text uh, song. Yeah, right yeah now, but it's. And, and, it's, uh, and it's a ragu patat song. And look, Cody, Cody Gidry, no, I told him too. I was about to say, when Get you said Casey <laughs> earlier, is that Cody's brother? Yeah, exactly. Casey so he Gidry. said that he hung with Casey uh, from school and stuff. That's Cody's brother. Yeah, Cody's yeah, brother. The yeah. basis Casey. for No oh, Luna Wild Shout out. Shout out to you. used to no play basketball with them boys, man. Shout out to I love them guys. Yeah, them dudes are from down the volume. Yeah, because I mean, just remember this. Ragu patat. Hey, if there's ever a true word, I'll tell you, it's this. Exactly. Between Leeville and Fushan. <laughs> Ain't no place to be. <laughs> no. Ain't no place to be. Just know that. It's a good spot. This is a shout out to our, our people, Nunk New and the Wild This is our house band, Nunk New and the yeah. Wild Twos. Appreciate it. We had them that, that night over here. That was one of the, that was before uh, this crazy stuff happened. That's when you could have fun. Yeah. We had a good time over here that time with Nunk New and the Wild Two. What is five dollars a tail? <laughs> hey. <laughs> You gotta love you it. You know what my little boy likes? Uh, man, he snuck the crabs with, with the, the pom pom still on it. When he say that in here, man, he loves that part. You want to give, so so got... give me a little taste of the ragu patata? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the, uh, we got, what you said, the pork stew is probably your favorite, right? Can we talk about ragu patata for a minute, though? Sure. <laughs> talk about Let's talk about you it. <laughs> You gotta have fresh. You gotta have fresh. Tell me I didn't write a ragu patata song. Look at this dude. Ha! If I'm lying, I'm dying, coach. This dude has a no, ragu patat song. You got to get with hey. no, 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 it. My, my, my Sunday breakfast, okay, and I'm very sacred Sunday. People that know me, they've heard me say it a thousand times. It's my, it's my get back to Zen moment. Okay? Yeah, right. Get back with yourself. Commune with the Lord. Get back yeah, with yourself. Yeah, do your thing. Stuff, Whatever you know? it is you do. Uh, and I love to smother potatoes with breakfast on a Sunday. Okay, and that's, that that's, sounds interesting. That's kind of like a, a ragu That's patat. the beginning yeah, of the yeah, ragu patat. Yeah, you, gotta, you, you should make it an egg sandwich from a boy, Mitchell. Mm-hmm. It's a great egg sandwich. A great egg sandwich. Dude, I love Hey, fried egg, white bread, mayo, American cheese. I put it up there. Hey, El Bui. We'll, get, we'll, give, you a re- we'll give you a recipe later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a recipe later. <laughs> but listen, you know, we're talking about our Cajun culture and how diverse and different it is. Yeah, absolutely. And Prairie Cajuns and Bayou Cajuns and all that stuff. So here's the thing, Anthony Bourdain, amazing, right? Uh-huh. right. Loved yeah. him, watched every episode. Yes. That dude, you know, and, and we got to give a shout out to what's happening in Lake Charles right now. I was there For on sure. Saturday. Yeah, you went down there. Well, it, it's the worst. Prayers to those guys. It is right. the absolute worst storm damage I've ever seen. Total, Total disaster. disaster. And Chef Jose Andres from Spain, who has a worldwide feeding in, in um company that goes into disaster areas and feeds people like, right. immediately. He and Anthony Bourdain ate at this Spanish restaurant called El Bulli. El Bulli was this small place, world renowned for, it, 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 it's out of business, they, they shut it down, they didn't go out right. of business. It was the best restaurant on the planet. Every rating agency, Google it, yeah. the best restaurant on the planet. Hands down. And, I mean, Stay no question. Off. You couldn't get in there. Yeah. You had to make reservations years in advance. It was worse than Galatoire's on a Friday night. You could, yeah. You, you, it was tougher to get into the El Bouilly than it was to get into Galatoire's because you could pay a, a homeless person to go stand in line. <laughs> right. You couldn't do that at El Bouilly. Right. El Bouilly wasn't doing that. No. But anyway, they ate at El Bouilly twice during the Anthony Bourdain No Reservations. Mm-hmm. Well, one time he goes to St. Martin Parish uh-huh. for his Cajun episode. Uh-huh. Really? The Friday night, excuse me, they, they, he goes in town um, on the Friday, they bought him some crawfish. That Friday night, I think I've seen this they, uh, they do the crawfish ball, uh-huh. and then that evening, they do a fado do, uh-huh. they make a crawfish bisque. Uh-huh. Okay? They make a crawfish bisque. Uh-huh. 
among other things. And, and the yeah. guy that's hosting him is the, the lead singer, and, and I think he plays the accordion, for the Red Stick Ramblers, good yeah. Cajun band. Yeah. And um, he's eating potato salad and crawfish bisque on a paper plate <laughs> under some string lights <laughs> in somebody's backyard in St. Martin Parish. So wow. that was okay. the best. And he's eating and he says... This is the single best bite of food that I have had since El Bouyi. Wow. Shh. Off a paper really? plate in somebody's backyard. Same Probably with some night. gnats biting them and he's oh, yeah. like, this is amazing. The, the next morning, he wakes up for a boucherie. They make <laughs> yeah. him shoot the pig in the head and everything. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's sweating bullets. He's so hungover. <laughs> Puff bed. And look, they cook and they doing it old school. Every Blood piece. soup, everything. Everything. Oh, yeah. Okay, like we do it in tent, uh-huh. in a tent war. Everything. Well, look, they're they doing a back. This dude loves pork more than me and you combined. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> look. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> he goes to this, this this old boy, no shirt, got a uh, bib overall, in the pot, in the cast iron in the sun. Yeah. Sweat. I mean, it's got to be 95. Just get it. Get it, coach. Just hot. And, and he keeps going back. He's going to look at everything. They're making the boudin. They're making everything. Crackling, all that stuff. He keeps coming back to this pork stew. Like I said earlier, uh-huh. the guy's making the pork stew, but just the backbone. Using the backbone to make the pork stew. Waits all day, eats it, and he says this. That's got to be the best. For the second time, yeah. In as many days, this is the single best bite of food that I've had since El Bui. Now, here's a man that has wow. had it all over the world. Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay? And he thinks that our food well, can drop phones, Coach, can make yeah. the noise. And better than Bui. Well, it's the... Is uh, El Bui... No, but that's what I wanted to ask you. Torta Bui. Is there any Here correlation from Bui to Torta Bui? You know, I, 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 went, any, I ran with the Bulls in Spain in 2002. In 2000. Okay. 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 2000. okay. The and, Bulls in Spain. And I went across the country and I never had Torbuyi in Spain. Okay. Well. And nor did I get into El Bouyi. Because you can't no, pay. Like, right. you, you can't pay. You can't pay. Yeah. yeah. You're like, hey, bro. The whole one's got it. Yeah. The same problem. Well, a lot of people don't realize how much passion and love go, goes into us cooking. I mean, for me, I cook a lot. Well, we got a lot of background noise today. Sure. It's all that moonshine they've been drinking back there. Hey, the oh. production crew been drinking a little well, too much back there. Know about it. <laughs> Lighten it up. Uh, for me, and I'm sure it's for you, it's like you know, getting up on a Saturday morning, your mom's cooking, your dad's cooking. Uh, you grew up doing that. You grew my parent, my grandparents were Cuban. They were the same way that love for food, and it's just. You grow up like that, and everybody can cook a good Louisiana dish. It brings Louisiana. you together. I Absolutely. mean, it, 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 it brings you it's together. It's family. It's galvanized. You know, yes. Food, and, you know, we like to, you know, have a good time, and we drink while we cook. It just galvanizes family, friends. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. And like, I think and you had a you know, similar the, the, story. The way that the, one of the things that made me successful in the legislature you had a similar story was, about that. you know, when... The, the way the legislature works when you're in session, on Monday, you, you're meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But really, Monday is a half day for the majority of legislature, right. and Thursday is a half day for the majority okay. of legislature. Because, and people are like, oh, why well, are you not working harder and whatnot? No, the, the law and the rules of how this is set up right. is for only work so many. Uh, you can only do it so long. I mean, that's not actually accurate. Okay, but well. good try. What it is is you want. It's all about public access. You want to give the public the ability to read what you are trying to pass. Right. Right. So you you have right. to space out the time. Right. As opposed to just hurrying. Because if I have it. a committee on a Monday, and we we amend the bill, and then you're going to run it through the legislature, the public has no say. Right. You want them to have the ability to read what you just did, right. give their input, the side that's for and the side that's against, and have some actual representative democracy, which is what this country is founded which on. Which we supposed to be. In it. So we space it out intentionally for that. Right. right? So 
the difference is on Mondays, the money committees, the, the budget committees, the construction committees, the retirement committees, the ones that handle the actual bulk of the, the, the tax they gotta be money, there Monday morning. you got to be there Monday morning, 9 o'clock. Well, if you live from, you know, outside of, like, from, from my house, okay, if I'm driving from Chauvin, yeah. I... 145 minutes. Oh, no, that's from here, okay? <laughs> if you're driving from Chauvin, that's a two-hour and 15-minute drive period. Not even so, stopping getting the coffee. That's just a straight <laughs> shot. You better guys. have the coffee in the morning, coach. <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's a haul. Yeah. So imagine coming from Shreveport. Right. Monroe. Yeah, you got to wake okay. up at 2 o'clock in the morning. So a lot of people come in the night before, and, you know, across the street from the Capitol is the old Pentagon Barracks, which not a lot of people know this, but it was the original home of LSU. Right. LSU Tigers. Pre-Civil War, you know, and um, it, it, it's it's – just this amazing complex. It faces the river, and the Capitol is literally right across. You can walk to the Capitol, just across the street. So in the Senate, they afford you space to live. It's a, just a, now it's just a converted dorm. And um, I learned this from my father. You know, he was such a good legislator, and, and one of the reasons he was was because he would always have people over He'd bring people from down the bayou, from from Tenth Ward, yeah. right. from Lil Kaya Montague, right. from here, you know, and they would come up and they'd cook. And they'd now bring some stuff. With food. The May season started. They brought a bunch of shrimps. He would cook. You know, one night he would ball it. Yeah. The next night they would fry it. The next, and I mean, when I say he'd bring some shrimp, I mean like forty-eight gallon <laughs> ice chest, like four of them, right. and we're just cooking shrimp. Just we're gonna for do, then, then for the cool kids, we could go to the mansion one night. We could cook for the governor <laughs> and all this stuff. Okay, and we do it all. They, he did it all, right. and I learned that as a kid. When I got there, you know, twenty-five years after he died, they didn't do anything like that, and I made it my mission. To bring back that bipartisan kind of camaraderie, yeah. and on Sunday nights, you know, those of us that live far away, we'd come in. Everybody we'd would cook, converge back at the Capitol. And it didn't come. matter if you were Republican, Democrat, oh. white, black, woman, man. man. You just couldn't be a All lobbyist family. or anything like that. Yeah. It was just just us. You could bring your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your significant other. Didn't Correct. Matter. Just, but it was us. But it was a close knit. And we were cooking, we were hanging out. My buddy from from uh, Lake Charles, Ronnie Johns, who I went and, and helped out on uh, Saturday. He'd come in, he'd, he'd be driving in his contribution. He'd bring two bottles of wine and a box of Don's boot in. <laughs> Every single time, that was it. Everything and whatever we were cooking, bread on land. You knew Senator Boudin from, was coming. Yeah, the other half Boudin of Terrible Parish. From big big fisherman. Yeah. Okay, he'd always bring snapper and. Uh, he'd get them big leg pelour crabs. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Just <laughs> yeah. and big, we'd great eat, food. And we'd just be communal, and it was awesome. That's good. That's a good, that's, that's a really cool story to hear. That yeah. you know, like and when you feed idea. somebody and you get them drunk, <laughs> the next day when you need a vote, it's hard for them to tell you that. That's right. No, it is. <laughs> when you that's feed right. somebody and you drink with them, they, that is right. you become family almost at that hey, point. That's right. He yeah. loves a good meal, man. And the thing about it, you know, at the end of the day, what made me as successful as I was, was I helped people. Yeah. Okay. When, when, when a legislator from that had maybe been a, a, new, a one-termer from northeast Louisiana, didn't know nothing about the right. process... I don't know how I'm going to pass this bill. I would help. You know, same thing in the house and whatnot. And I, if people would ask me for help, I would help. Yeah. And you know what happens whenever you do that? When you need help, they're it there. makes it real hard for them to Everyone, tell you. Yeah, yeah, everyone's there to you know, help. Because we, they see that that's what you want. You want to progress. It's not about where you are, people. who you from. You know? I mean, where you from or yeah, whatever. We live it's, in such a diverse state, y'all. That's right. I mean, look. Look at the look at the division. I mean, right how diverse it is from Lafourche to Terrebonne. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay, right. imagine how diverse it is from, you know, Saint Bernard Parish to Calcasieu Parish. It's all good. I mean, it's completely different. And then, well, uh, like you said, like North, like that's a whole nother place. I mean, well, I mean, from, we consider them like Arkansas. You know, in Mississippi, like the greatest, uh, if you're from Jackson, North. Mississippi, or Gulfport, Mississippi, you pretty much just a different <laughs> division of Southern Baptist. Yeah, but you the same. 
Same say, thing with Alabama and yeah. Georgia and all yeah. that stuff over here. We got like three different religions. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's when like, you cross I-10, we got, you just totally we got bless your hearts and yeah, all that. Cultural diversity. You know, yeah. one of the things I'm having a real difficult thing with is, you know, um, peace be with you. You know? I mean, look, I'm team, and also with you till I die. This this team, uh, and with your spirit thing, I'm having yeah, trouble. Throwing a little curve so off in the back. I'm having curve. trouble with yeah. that. Okay, I'll be honest. They keep changing, okay. man. It wasn't even close to that when I was a youngster. Oh no, I mean, I'm, I'm team, and also with you. Till I'm, till, I'm, till, you put me in, till I go meet, till I go meet Saint Peter. That's an old Absolutely, until you had the gates, bro. Well, that's good. I love the, I love the, like you said, I love the relationships and people have the adversity people have and the traditions and how much everybody loves this pl- this place that we call home so yeah, yeah we're lucky to live here and call it home i really uh appreciate you coming out we had to back man, it up fun. a little bit with the uh we appreciate the you sitting and, between the barrels man. yeah well, yes. I mean, coming out we could have kept going with captain small bladder right here yeah <laughs> Oh, we can sit down and talk for hours. That's but uh, uh, hey, we just, just because we're turning off the uh, <laughs> cameras, don't mean we're not going to sit here and enjoy a couple more of these beautiful cocktails from uh, Bayou Terrible on the Story. Well, man, drinking say, a Manny Fresh. Yeah, I'm uh, a Manny Fresh. Let me, let me say this: since we love the culture so much, I, I got to give a shout out. Um, if you were from Chauvin or you went to Cocodrie to fish or Robinson Canal. Passed my mate snowball stand. Sure did. Yep. And, and Miss Mame passed, passed away. away. I saw that yesterday. Mame is my second cousin. Okay. Her mama and my grandmother Florence, uh, Robichaud Laparouse, uh, mm-hmm. was this. And, you know, when you lose these pillars of your community, yep. right. you know, you lose a little bit of your culture. And I know that's what, do. what Noah and them are trying to do here is yep. keep right. the culture. I know what y'all trying to do with this thing is keep yep. the culture. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, what, there, are, there are a few things growing up on by Lokaya, being from Chauvin on uh, Lokaya. It was a oh, it was better than those snowballs, I brother. Mean, look, you'd it go to the Chauvin pool in the summertime, <laughs> and you'd walk to the front of the street, you'd, you'd get a MMA snowball, you'd play softball at the park, you'd play baseball at the park, you'd go to the MMA. We love it. We're gonna be, when I opened the bar down the street, right. Bar Roussel, bar bar Roussel. Roussel. we had a sig- one of the signature shots there. Was We called it a MMA snowball. Okay? Right. And it was coconut rum. I love coconut snowball. And Godiva chocolate. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. Godin, <laughs> it tasted like a mame snowball with cream, coconut with cream. Right. Delicious. That, in that, when we talk about Mardi Gras, uh-huh. half of her grandkids ride on one float in Aphrodite. Uh-huh. And a bunch of her cousins. Uh-huh. And that float. Every year that the bar was open, come get it. Would come into come that ride, bar, ride. and they would order a round of MMA snowballs for the whole floor, <laughs> just to honor me. Who, who was not? Who was still alive and kicking? Right. Okay, just, yeah, <laughs> they would just do it because that was are, part of the culture, coach. Hey, and like you said, I mean, I grew up going fishing in Coca Green. You go through show, man. That's you stopped and you got you a snowball for sure. Rest MMA in. snowball. That's awesome. man. That's God, awesome. we're going to miss it. But thank you all for having me. Oh, not a problem. Well, appreciate we love you it, man. Uh, hey, we can't wait. This ain't going to be the only time you sit between yeah, we got oh, you back. Part deux? Yeah, yeah part no, deux. part deux, three, Absolutely. four. You're going to be a reoccurring guest. I, ho- I hope by then we all shave off COVID mullets, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Some long hair going yeah, on right bro, now. We went after, man. Yeah, you definitely got to come back. Uh, Chad, tell us who we got next, uh, next episode. Next episode, if you want to send in any questions, we got, uh, he is running for judge, Mr. Yeah. Tim Ellender. Ooh. Tim Ellender, he's going to f- try to follow up Mr. Norby here in between the barrels. Good luck, Tim. <laughs> Good luck, Tim. You see how you like them old come football on, spot now? Come on over between And we're going to talk barrels. to Tim, too, about whether he plays follow suit or, uh, <laughs> or whether he plays cut through. Yeah, uh, I like it. So that's uh, us between the barrels. Norby, appreciate it again. Appreciate you, brother. We out. Boom. Peace and bacon grease. (laughs)